اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان العین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحسین عماه العادون ولا يؤدی حقه المشتهدون الذي بعد فلا يرى وقربا فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء وخاتم المرسلین والشفی المضربین سیدنا و نبینا بالقاسم محمد ولا اہل بیتہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین الذین اضحب اللہ عنہم الرجس و تحرہم تطحیرا واللانت دائمت الباقی العدائهم ومنکر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد فقد قال اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی فی کتابه الكریم وجعلن منهم عمتا يهدون بأمرنا لما صبروا وكانوا بآياتنا يوقنون صلوات Today was the 25th of Muharram, which was the anniversary of the Shahadat of our fourth Imam, Imam Ali Zainul Abidin, alayhi salatu wa salam. Keeping the occasion in mind, inshallah, I'll be talking about the fourth Imam, especially his message and his legacy that he has left for us. tonight and the next two nights, inshallah. Because when we look at the Azaf, Sayyidah Shuhada, after the day of Ashura, these are the days of the family of Hussein bin Ali. And among the women and the children, you had Imam Zainul Abideen as the main male adult leading that caravan. And so even his Shahadat coming at that time as a symbolic, you know, connection of Imam with the, um, the whole process of Aza during the month of uh, Muharram. When we look at the fourth Imam, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him a long life, you know, in a sense that he lived for 56 years. And during that, 33 years was the era of his Imamat. 33 years, the era of Imamat, starting from the day of Ashura till the day of his Shahadat. But the image that we have in our mind about the fourth Imam is actually limited to his status and his condition in Karbala on the day of Ashura. And when I say the understanding that I, we have is because we hear. And I'm not saying the whole literature of Marsiya and Noha are wrong or we should not be using the words Abid Abimar. That is how we remember our Imam from childhood. And when we hear this term Abid Abimar, you know, on a subconscious level, the image that we have without really intending it to be that way, of somebody who was ill and sick all the time. And when you have that kind of a concept, especially when you put him immediately after the lives of the first Imam, and then the second Imam, and then the third Imam, ending with the Shahadat on the day of Ashura, immediately you see different in, a difference in his life compared to the Imams who came before. And this is where on a subconscious level, and I would like to emphasize this point, I don't think any Shia looks at Imam in that way, but on a subconscious level when we hear these words, Abid Bimar, Abid Bimar, Abid Bimar, the image that we have of somebody who was constantly ill. He was not that active. And with that you have other implications that maybe he was not as shuja and courageous as the imams who came before him. Whereas this is the wrong understanding. He was bimar, yes, but only at that time. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses natural means in order to bring about the will that he has. And the way he wanted to preserve this line of imamat in the progeny of Imam Hussain alayhi salam was by making the fourth imam as ill at that time. And that's where how his, his life was, you know, preserved. It doesn't mean he was bimar constantly before it, and he was bimar constantly after the day of Ashura. And so, yes, in the context of the events of Karbala, that terminology or that description of the imam would be valid. Because we have to understand the essence of imamat. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Sajda, ayat number 24, when he say, talks about imamat in general, he says, وَجَعَلْنَ مِنْهُمْ عَيْمَّةً That from among the people we have appointed some as imams, as leaders, as guides. يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا They guide people according to our command. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives them the amr. And based on that amr, they guide the people. Nowhere in Quran does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the criteria that he has used for bestowing imamat to anyone except in this ayat. Imamat is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody has a right to ask him, why did you make so and so an imam and not the other? It is not based on the public opinion or the will of the people. It was the will and the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so there was no, no need for him to explain any criteria or conditions for imamat. But in this ayat he says, وَجَعَلْنَ مِنْهُمْ عَيْمَّةً يَحْدُونَ, أمر يحدون بأمرنا لما صبروا وكانوا بآياتنا يوقنون. Two qualities. He says there were two qualities that I look for imamat. One is sabr, patience, and the other is yaqeen in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salawat upon the And when you look at that ayat and that basis of imamat, our fourth imam is an imam exactly the same as Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Exactly the same as Imam Hassan. Exactly the same as Amir al Mu'mineen. When it comes to the status of Imamat and the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifts the Imam in order to guide the people, there is no difference between the fourth Imam and the first Imam. Or the fourth Imam and the second Imam. Or the fourth Imam and his father, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. They are all equipped with the same, you know, credentials. And the qualities for leadership, however, every imam looks at his own circumstances, his own time and place, and based on that, he selects the method of providing guidance to the people. And this is where we see that, you know, the purpose of Amir al Mu'mineen and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and Imam Zain al Abidin was always the same. Yahduna bi amrina. To guide people according to the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the method was based on the circumstances that they found themselves. Sometimes Amir al-Mu'minin decided to be patient. He was Muslim. There was a time when he took out this war. Imam Hassan alayhi salam decided to confront Muawiyah. But then when circumstances demand that he make a truce or peace treaty with Muawiyah, he did it. When situations change, Imam Hussain alayhi salam decided to protest against a tyrant like Yazid. And so the purpose was always the same, but the method was different. And Imam Zainul al Abideen was as much a mujahid as Imam Hussain alayhi salam and as Amir al Mu'minin Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. salam. All of them did jihad, but the method of jihad was different. All of them were doing Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahil al Munkar, but the method of doing Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahil al Munkar was different. When you look at the whole process of jihad, 
You know, it is divided in different ways. There is one jihad be safe, where you use the sword, a weapon, and that is considered to be the minor jihad. But there is another jihad which is known as jihad bil lisan or jihad bil qalam. Where an imam would do jihad by his speech, by his writings, by his words. And then there is a third dimension of jihad which is known as jihad bil akhlaq. The behavior of the imam, the example of the imam, the attitude of the imam in interaction with people, friends and enemies alike. That is, it becomes itself a form of jihad that we see in the life of the fourth imam. And so inshallah we will look at all these different you know, dimensions of the jihad of our fourth imam, Imam Ali ibn Hussein Zain al-Abideen alayhi salatu wa salam. Salawat wa alaykum Before tonight, briefly, let us look at his jihad bil lisan. And his shuja'at and courage comes out very clearly. There is a statement in Arabic, I'm not sure whether this is from a hadith or not. Kalimatu haqqin inda l-imam al-ja'ir is considered to be the sign of shuja'at and courage. Means to speak the truth in presence of a tyrant ruler. Even though you know that you might be killed. You might be put into prison. But still to say the haqq in presence of a tyrant ruler itself is the sign of shujat and courage. When we look at our imam, you know, just two or three examples for tonight. After the events of Karbala, when the family of Imam Hussain is made captive, along with Imam Zainul Abidin, they were, they were taken all the way to Kufa. Ibn Ziyad, in his darbar, they were presented there. And if you look at the conversation there, that's where you come to see some of the dimensions of the shuja'at and courage of Imam Zainul Abidin. Ibn Ziyad, out of his arrogance, displaying his arrogance and his pride in what he considered to be apparent victory in his mission, by killing Imam Hussain alayhi salam and making his uh, family member captives, he was actually, you know, walking around, looking at the prisoners. When it comes to Imam Zain al-Abideen, he asked him, you know, man anta, who are you? And Imam simply gave his name, Ana Ali ibn Hussain. Ibn Ziyad had been given the list of the people from the family of Hussain who had been killed in Karbala. And therefore he says, أَلَيْسَ قَدْ قَطَلَ اللَّهُ عَلِيِّ بْنِ الْحُسَيْنِ He says, but did not Allah kill Ali ibn al-Husayn? This is where, you know, because he's looking at the list, and the list has a son of Imam Hussein by the name of Ali. And that was referring to Ali al-Akbar. But look at the, the taunt and the, uh, the taunting nature of Ibn Ziyad and the arrogance where he says, أَلَيْسَ قَدْ قَتَلَ اللَّهُ عَلِي بْنَ الْحُسَيْنِ Did not Allah kill Ali ibn al-Husayn? So now he is re relating his own actions and of his army with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's saying what happened in Karbala was done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam responds to him basically in, in, in a way which is very powerful. Remember this is the time where we also see examples of the line of difference in the theology among the Muslims. If you look at the uh, historians who have written the, the, uh, the history of Muslim theology, they will say that the concept of Jabr, this concept that whatever we do is actually based on the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings are not really free. This concept of Jabr was invented among the Muslims by Banu Umayyah, starting with Muawiyah. In order to appease the feelings of the people, because when they looked at the unjust policies of the uh, rulers, 
there was sense of you know protesting against them, uprising against them, and in order to you know calm them down, appease the people, they started inventing and talking about this. The scholars and their muhaddisin started talking about this concept concept of Jabr. That whatever the Khalifa is doing actually is not his doing. Don't blame him for what is happening to you. It is the doing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And since Allah is doing, so therefore you don't have a right to uh, protest there. And that is the same mentality you see in Ibn Ziyad where he says, أَلَيْسَ قَتَلَ اللَّهُ عَلِيَ ibn Hussein? Did not Allah kill Ali ibn Hussein? An Imam responds to that by saying, وَقَدْ كَانَ لِي أَخٌ يُسَمَّ عَلِيًّا I had a brother who was also known as Ali. You are confusing me with him. But then Imam did not just stop at giving that identity of himself. He said, قَدْ كَانَ لِي أَخٌ يُسَمَّ عَلِيًّا قَتَلَهُ النَّاسِ Allah didn't kill him. People killed him. Referring to his people. And so Imam makes it very clear, don't put the blame on, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the people who are responsible for killing my brother Ali ibn Hussein al-Akbar. Ibn Ziyad now is insisting, Balillahu qatalahu. No, it is Allah who has killed him. And this is where Imam recites the ayat of Quran, Allahu yatawaffa al-anfus hina mawtiha. The role of Allah is that he will take the soul at the time of death. But who is the person responsible for death? It's not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the murderer and the ki killer. It is qatalahu nas not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has killed my brother. Salawat, brother Iqbal. And that is why you'll see the the historians of Muslim theology, they actually have they come up with a description where they say, At-Tawheed wal-Adl ala wiyan wal-Jabr wal-Tashbih umawiyan. The purity of the concept of Tawheed and Adl comes from the Alawi ideology. And the concept of Jabr and Tashbih about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes from the Umayyad ideology. The lines are very distinct even when we talk about some of the theological concepts and that also comes out very clear in this conversation between Ibn Ziyad representing the Umayyad camp and Imam Zainul Abideen representing the Alawi camp. Salawat Akbar. But this is where the tyrant, you know, governor couldn't take it anymore. And he says, وَبِكَ جُرْعَةٌ لِجَوَابِ وَفِيهِ بَقِيَّةٌ لِلرَّدُّ عَلَيَّ He says, you know, look at your situation. You are my prisoners. And you still have this ability, جُرْعَةٌ That courage to respond to what I'm saying. And you would like to, you know, counter my arguments. And he felt so bad about it. That he actually turns to his soldiers and he says, "Izhabu bihi fadribu unuka." Take him to the side and you know kill him. And this is where we see, you know, Zainab bint Ali fulfilling her pledge to her brother. Where Imam had given the responsibility of protecting Imam Zainul Abidin to Zainab. This is where she comes forward and says. لَا وَاللَّهِ وَلَا أُفَارِقُهُ فَإِنْ قَتَلْتَهُ فَاقْتُلْنِ مَعَهُ The Ba'a Allah will not leave him. And if you have to kill him, first you will have to kill me. And this is where Imam did not stop. It's not that after this threat of, you know, being killed, Imam Zainul Abedin is silent. This is where we look at the shuja'at and the courage of Imam Zainul Abedin, where he says to his aunt, let me respond to him. Abil qatli tuhaddiduni ibn Ziyad. O ibn Ziyad, you are threatening me with killing, by killing me? You know, you're threatening, you think you can threaten me by saying that you're going to kill me? Ama alimta. 
O Ibn Ziyad, after doing what you have done in Karbala, you still do not know in al qatl lana adatan wa karamatuna min Allahi as shahada that to be killed in the way of Allah has become a second nature for us. And shahadat has become an honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. Don't, you know, don't try to frighten me by giving this, you know, order of killing me. I'm not impressed by you and I'm not threatened by you. This is where we have to realize not the image of Abid Bimar. But the Abid who was as Shuja as Hussein and Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Salawat bin Akbar. Using the term Adat and Karamat, you know, he says this has become an Adat of us. This family. Look at Karbala. We have Ashab of Imam Hussain and then you have the family of Imam Hussain. Among those who are known as Banu Hashim, there were 18 of them. Actually, even to call them Banu Hashim is not a proper way of defining them. Because all 18 male members of the family who gave their lives in Karbala. Because when you talk about Banu Hashim, even Banu Abbas are included in there. If you really look at the Banu Hashim, Shohada of Karbala, all of them actually are descendants of Abu Talib and Fatima binti Asad. It is that family. It is that blood, and it is that, you know, tarbiyat coming, coming from one generation to another, where they, it became an adat for them, a second nature for them, that whenever Islam needed their help, even to this extent of sacrificing their lives, Ali Abi Talib were always there at the forefront in the battlefield. Salawat, Pranayakbar. When we talk about al-jihad bil lisan, this is one example of it. In the presence of Ibn Ziyad, another example we see in Sham. Because this jihad bil lisan is not only used to put others down, it is also used to guide those who are ignorant. Depending on who is there in the front, the imam or the wise leader following the imams will use their tone and their, you know, the language of discourse will depend on the audience. If they are talking with somebody who knows the haqq and still is stubborn and whose soul is corrupted, there is a different way of responding to them. But when you are dealing with somebody who is ignorant, who has been brainwashed, there the language would be different, the style would be different. In Sham, when this family was taken all the way to Damascus, we know the circumstances. At the, at the door of Damascus, there were many people there who had gathered. There was one old, old person who came, because this is what they had been fed. That this is actually a family of those who were rebelled against the Khalifa of the time. And they are the enemies of Islam. An old person, apparently who looked like a pious person, comes to the Imam, close to him. And he says, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahlakakum wa amkan al-amir minka. That all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has destroyed you and your family, and he had made it possible for our ruler to control you. An Imam looked at him. An Imam realized that you know he is ignorant. He doesn't look like a vicious person. And so Imam looked at his age also and he says, Ya Shaykh, aqara'at al-Quran? Old man, have you read the Quran? He says, yes. 
Now Imam starts reciting the ayat of Quran which were about Ahlul Bayt. First he recited the ayat of ayat of Mawadda. Where Imam says, Aqara'ta qul la as'alukum alayhi ajran illa al-mawaddata fil qurba. Have you not read this ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the Prophet to say to the Muslims to love the Ahlul Bayt? And he says, yes. And then Imam says, فَنَحْلُ الْقُرْبَ يَا شَيْخ That qurba mentioned in that ayat refers to us. Then Imam says, هَلْ قَرَعْتَ وَعَاتِزِ الْقُرْبَ حَقَّهُ Have you heard this ayat, read this ayat in Quran where the Prophet is ordered to give the right to the near ones? He says, yes. And again, Imam says, وَنَحْنُ الْقُرْبَ Even that qurba mentioned in that ayat refers to us. يا شيخ هل قرأت هذه الآية وعلم أن ما غنمت من شيء فإن لله خمسه وللرسول ولذي القربة. He recites the ayat of khums and he says, Have you recited read this? And he says, Yes. Again, Imam says, ونحن القربة. Even the قربة mentioned in that ayat refers to us. And then Imam says, يا شيخ هل قرأت إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس على البيت ويتحركم تطحيرا Again he says yes I'm familiar with this ayat and Imam says نحن أهل البيت We are the أهل البيت الذين اختصن الله بآية التحارة Allah has given this ayat of تطحير specially for us and that is where this person, you know, he says, Billahi, innakum hum. Are you really true in what you are saying that all these ayat that you recited applies to you? And Imam says, Tallahi, inna la nahnuhum min ghayri shakkin, wa haqqi jaddina rasulillah, inna la nahnuhum. That I, in the name of Allah, I say, that all these people I mentioned in this ayat refers to us. In the name of my grandfather Rasulullah, I'm saying this is us when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks uh, in this ayat. And that is where this person says, raises his hand and he says, Allahumma inni abra'u ilayka min aduwi ali Muhammad. O Allah, I do bara'at, I disassociate myself from the enemies of the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see the conversion and change. In the beginning he says to Imam, Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahalakakum, wa amkan al-amir minka. You know, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who destroyed you and gave our Amir supremacy over, over you. At the end, now he's saying he's distancing himself from Aduwi Ali Muhammad. And this conversion comes from somebody who has the courage and the knowledge in that circumstances. It is not a you know, debating class or a uh, you know, event. He's there as a prisoner being humiliated by the people of the city of Damascus. But then he has the courage, he has that calmness in his nature that he can talk to this person in order to, you know, seize that moment of doing hidayat because he is the imam. Wherever they see the opportunity of guidance, the imam of Nur will always seize that moment and guide the people who look for the truth and for haq. Salawat from the Iqbal. But the same Imam, when he is asked similar questions by somebody who is not ignorant, rather a person who, uh, whose soul is corrupted, knows the haq, rather he's trying to just you know, taunt the Imam. In the same situation, he is still a prisoner of Yazid, a person from Ban Umayyah, Ibrahim bin Talha bin Ubaidullah, comes to the Imam and he says, Ya Ali ibn Hussein, man ghalaba? 
You know, he says, you, the family of Ali, you always thought you were very high, you know, always winning. Today, man ghalab. Who is victorious today? Imam looked at him. And he realized he is not looking for the truth. He is just looking for an opportunity to hurt me even more. And that's what Imam says, If you really want to know who is victorious, when the time of Azan comes, when the time of Namaz comes, do the Azan, and you will see who is the victorious. Because in the Azan, you will mention the name of my grandfather, not the name of your ancestors. Salawat And that is where we see, you know, when Rasulullah says, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. Even the name of Rasulullah was maintained because of the sacrifice of Husayn bin Ali. And this is what Imam is saying. If you really want to see who is victorious, when you stand up for Azan and Iqama, repeat it and think about it. You will be mentioning the name of my grandfather and not your grandfather. And we see the same situation even in the Darbar of Yazid. And I'm sure all of you have heard about it many times, but I just would like to put this into, in, into the context. That when you look at the two khutbas given by Bibi Zainab first and then Imam Zainul Abidin after her, in the Darbar of Yazid, and I probably it was last year or the year before, in Masuma, I had talked in detail about this khutbah and the uh, historical background b behind them. If you really look at that, you will see that they, these two khutbahs actually complement one another. You cannot really grasp the whole uh, you know, scenario until you look at both the khutbahs together. Bibi Zainab, to summarize what I had said earlier, is that Bibi Zainab comes in to do what we call tabarra, to expose the nature of Yazid and the family of Banu Umayyah. And after that was done, then Imam Zainul Abidin comes forward. And now he does tawalla. Bibi Zainab did not really talk more about Ali Muhammad. She exposed the reality of the Umayyad family. It is Imam Zainul Abidin who comes in and now he talks about himself and, and, and the family. And so these, these two khutbas actually complement one another. You cannot really study one without the other. And this is where we see that, you know, after the um, khutbah of Bibi Zainab, and this is again a sign of victory, that Yazid felt threatened with the reaction of the people who heard the khutbah of Bibi Zainab. And in order to neutralize the effect of Bibi Zainab's speech, he orders a khatib, the official orator of Darbar, you know, to give a khutbah condemning and tarnishing the image of Ali and Ali Ali. And he did his whatever garbage he had to say. And this is where Imam Zainul Abidin stood up and according to historians it's very interesting that Imam himself took the initiative and he says he says to the khatib he says waylak ayyuha al khatib ishtarayta ridha al makhluq bi sukht al khaliq you actually have taken the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by pleasing the ruler of the time and you actually have reserved your seat in the Jahannam with that. And then referring to Yazid, Imam says, أَتَعْزُنُ لِي أَنْ عَسْعَدَ هَذِهِ الْعَوَادِ فَاتَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَمَاتٍ فِيهِنَّ لِلَّهِ رِضَى وَلِهَا أُولَاءِ الْجَالِسِينَ أَجْرٌ وَثَوَابٌ Yazid, do you allow me to go and sit على هذه الْعَوَادِ It's very interesting. Imam doesn't say, Member. 
He uses the word al-a'awad. This is the piece of wood. Remember, this doesn't have any sanctity until haq is spoken from this place. It's not a member. Otherwise, it's just a'awad. You know, piece of wood. And this is what Imam is saying. Allow me to get on this piece of wood فَأَتَكَلَّمْ So that I may say few words in which Allah will be pleased and those who are listening to me will get ajr and sawab by listening to what I have to say. Mu'a'id Yazid knew that if he goes on the member, what will happen? And so basically he hesitated. But this is where the people, they see a young man in chains and shackles having this courage to say to the king of the Muslim emperor that I would like to go on the member and respond to this khatib that you have asked to speak against my grandfather. And when they saw that courage, they were the one who actually insisted on Yazid, we would like to listen to this young man. It was not because Yazid was willing to allow the imam to speak. It was the insistence of the people which forced Yazid to allow the imam to speak. And he goes there and the way he talks about it, look at it. It's very different from the approach that Bibi Zainab had where he says, Ayyuhannas u'utina sittan wa fuddhulna bisaba'a. Begins by introducing his own family. He says, I belong to a family where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with six things and preferred us over others because of seven items. And what are those? وَعْتِينَا لِعِلْمُ وَلِحِلْمُ وَالسَّمَاحَ وَالْفَصَاحَ وَالشُّجَاعَ وَالْمُحَبَّ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted us with knowledge, with forbearance, with nobility, with eloquence, with shuja'at and courage, and with the love that the mu'mineen have in their hearts for us. وَفُضِّلْنَا And we have been preferred by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the ummah because of seven individuals. وَفُضِّلْنَا بِعَنَّ مِنَّ النَّبِيِّ الْمُخْتَارَ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ وَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ We have been preferred over the others through the Prophet. وَمِنَّ السِّدِّيقِ Siddiqi Akbar is from us. وَمِنَّ الطَّيَّارِ Ja'far al-Tayyar is from us. وَمِنَّ عَسَدُ اللَّهِ وَعَسَدُ الرَّسُولِ Hamza Sayyid al-Shuhada is from us. وَمِنَّ سَيِّدَةُ النِّسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ Fatimatul Batul Fatima is from us. وَمِنَّ سِبْتَ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ وَسَيِّدِ الشَّبَابِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ and the leaders of the youths of paradise and the grandsons of the prophet are from us. These seven individuals are the basis of the fadilat and the preference of Ali Muhammad over the ummah of Muhammad. Salawat. And then he goes on to himself. And he says, وَمَنْ عَرَفَنِي فَقَدْ عَرَفَنِي Whoever knows me, he knows me. But those of you who don't know me, listen, who am I? أنا ابن مكة ومنا أنا ابن زمزم والصفا He doesn't start with his family. He says, I am the son of Mecca and Mina. All the holy places and the symbol of Islam, they are related to us. I represent them. I belong to them. And Ibn Zamzam wa Safa. And then he refers to his family. Talking about the Prophet, and I'm, I'll just make it very brief. I think I've gone, didn't see when I sat down, but anyway. As a Musafir, I think I have some leeway <laughs> to extend my talk. What he says, referring to his relationship to Rasulullah. وَنَعَبْنَ مَنْ حَمَلَ الزَّكَاةِ بِعَطْرَافِ الرِّدَىٰ أَنَا أَبْنَ خَيْرُ مَنْ اِعْتَزَلَىٰ وَارْتَدَىٰ أَنَا أَبْنَ خَيْرُ مَنْ اِنْتَعَلَىٰ وَاحْتَفَىٰ 
انا ابن خير من طاف وصعى وانا ابن خير من حج ولبى وانا ابن he goes on to say i am the son of the one who carried charity in his rida i am the um, son of the one who was the best among those who would put on on the clothes i am the best of those who actually you know even walked in a very special way i am the best of those who did tawaf and sa'i i am the best of one who did the hajj and did the talbiya in hajj wa ana ibn man humila ala al buraq fi al hawa i am the son of the one who was taken on buraq towards the heaven ana ibn man usriya bihi min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa fa subhana man asra i am was subhana man usriya he says i am the one whom allah took from masjid al haram to masjid al aqsa وانا ابن من بلغ به جبرائيل الى صدره المنطها ام ذا سن اوف ذا وان هم جبرائيل توك اول ذا واي تو ذا صدره المنطها انا ابن من دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين او ادنى ام ذا سن اوف ذا وان هو واز سو كلوز تو ذا كيرتن اوف ديفينيتي وي دونت هاف ووردز تو ديسكرايب ذات ستيت ايفن جبرائيل دينت ريتش ذير بات ان سوره النجم الله سبحانه وتعالى سايز ذات Rasulullah reached to that point that curtain of nur where he was just a the distance of one or two bows away from it why the hesitation did Allah know the exact distance the hesitation is not from him he is hesitating because we don't have the the, the ability to comprehend you know the qurbat of Muhammad to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salawat upon him Allah انا ابن من صلى بملائكه السماء ام ذا سن اوف ذا وان هو هو برايد وذ ذا ملائكه ان ذا هيفنز انا ابن من اوحى اليه الجليل ما اوحى اي ام ذا سن اوف ذا ذا اون اونربل وان هو غوت ذا ريفيليشن فروم الله سبحانه وتعالى ان ذا جيرني انا ابن محمد المصطفى صلوات الله عليه وسلم and then he comes to his grandfather now انا ابن علي المرتضى انا ابن من ضرب خراطيم الخلق حتى قالوا لا اله الا الله he goes on describing the accomplishment of amir al-mu'minin i am son of ali al-murtaza i am son of the one who actually used his sword in the service of la ilaha illa allah i am the one the son of the one who was actually fighting for the sake of our faith in front of rasulullah and then he talks about waqatil bi badr wa hunain and who never ever was even close to the shadow of kufr ana ibn salih al mu'minin i am the son of the one who was the best of the mu'minin wa waris al nabiyyin wa qatil al mulhidin wa yasub al muslimin wa nur al mujahidin wa zain al abidin wa taj al bakkain wa asbar al sabirin referring to Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam salawat on him He goes on He talks about Amir al-Mu'minin more than he talks with about Rasulullah He says I am the son of afdhal al-qa'imin min ali yasin wa rasul rabbil alamin ana ibn al-mu'ayyid bi jibril wal al-mansur bi mikail انا ابن المحامي عن حرم المسلمين وقاتل الناكسين والقاسطين والمارقين and then at the end he says and these are the very beautiful description of amir al-mu'minin he says i am the son of the one sahm min maramil allah ali was one of the arrows one of the arrows of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bustan hikmatillah and he was the garden of the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the combination of shuja'at and hikmat is very interesting there wa dhaka and then he says and that is jaddi ali bin abi talib and that is my grandfather ali bin abi talib alayhi salatu was salam and ibn fatima az-zahra then he talks about bibi fatima very briefly 
انا ابن فاطمه الزهراء انا ابن سيده النساء انا ابن الطهر البتول انا ابن بضعه الرسول this is all in the darbar of yazid where the people have never heard about ali muhammad in this way before it's interesting if you look at the whole khutbah when he talks about rasulullah when he talks about amir al-mu'minin when he talks about bi fatima even though briefly he is talking about their fazail but then he comes to his father امام زین العابدین کے اس خطبے میں ایک عجیب فرق نظر آتا ہے جہاں رسول کا ذکر ہے وہاں فضائل کو بیان کیا ہے جہاں علی کا ذکر ہے وہاں فضائل کو بیان کیا ہے جہاں فاطمہ کا ذکر ہے وہاں فضائل کو بیان کیا ہے لیکن جب امام سجاد نے اپنے بابا کا ذکر کیا ہے تو وہاں مسا وہاں مصائب پر آئے ہیں غالباً یہ جو سسٹم ہے ہمارے یہاں فضائل اور مصائب کی اگر روایت دیکھنی ہو تو امام کے اس خطبے میں ملے گی جہاں اپنے بابا کا تعارف جو کرتے ہیں انا ابن المرمل بدما کہ ہم اس کے فرزند ہیں کہ جس کا جسم جو ہے خون میں غلطا ہے انا ابن ذبی حکر بلا انا ابن ذبی حکر بلا کہ ہم کربلا کے ذبیح کے فرزند ہیں ازدار نے حسین ایک لمحے کے لیے آپ اس عنوان ذبیح پر ذرا غور کریں ہمارے تمام آئمہ سوائے امام حاضر کے سب شہید ہوئے ہیں زیادہ تر شہید ہوئے ہیں زہر کے ذریعے صرف دو اماموں کے سلسلے میں تلوار کا استعمال ہوا ہے امیر المؤمنین اور امام حسین علیہ السلام کے سلسلے میں امیر المومن کے سلسلے میں بھی ضربت لگی تھی وہ تلوار جس میں زہر بھی تھا اور دو دن کے بعد شہادت واقع ہوتی ہے اسی ضربت کی بنیاد پر اور زہر کی بنیاد پر لیکن حسین ابن علی کی بات کچھ اور ہے جو زہر سے شہید ہوئے جو زہر سے شہید ہوئے ضرب لگی لیکن دو یا تین دن کے بعد شہید ہوئے امیر المؤمنین لیکن امام حسین علیہ السلام کو زبی ہے اس لیے کہا جاتا ہے کہ زبی وہ ہے کہ جس کے جسم میں ابھی جان تھی اور خنجر کے ذریعے اس کے سر کو تن سے جدا کیا گیا یہ کسی اور شخص کے ساتھ نہیں ہوا اور اسی لیے امام رضا علیہ السلام بھی اپنے اس گفتگو میں ابن شبیب کے ساتھ جو جملہ ہے امام کا یا ابن شبیب ان کنت باقی ان علا شعی ان فب کا علال حسین بن علی ابن شبیب اگر تجھے رونا ہے کسی بات پر آدم سے خاتم تک اور آخر کسی بات پر یا کسی شخص پر رونا ہے تو حسین ابن علی پر رو لِعَنَّهُ وُبِحَا اس لیے کہ حسین کو زبا کیا گیا ہے جس طرح سے ایک دمبے کو زبا کیا جاتا ہے اور اس لیے امام زن العابدین نے یزید کے دربار میں اسی عنوان کو پیش کیا ہے جہاں امام پھر فرماتے ہیں انا ابن من بکا علیہ الجن فی الظلماء الجن فی الظلماء کہ جن بھی ہمارے بابا پر روئے ہیں اور پرند بھی روئے ہیں میرے بابا پر اددار آر حسین ان باتوں کو سننے کے بعد مجمع نے رونا شروع کیا ہے یا تک کہ یزید کو جب خطرہ محسوس ہوا اس نے امام کے اس اثر کو ختم کرنے کے لیے اور بیان اور کلمات کو روکنے کے لیے معزن کو حکم دیتا ہے کہ وہ ازان شروع کر دے ازان جب شروع ہوئی امام اپنے جگہ پہ رہے لیکن خاموش ہو جاتے ہیں تکبیر کو دہراتے ہیں وحدانیت کے شہادت کو دہراتے ہیں لیکن جب معزن نے اشہد ان محمد رسول اللہ کہا ہے اس وقت امام نے کہا اے معزن اسی محمد کا
لعنت الله القوم الظالمين سيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون